Hi, I'm Reverend Rodrigo Solano, the minister at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Belinda, and I'm here to bring the church closer to you. Those among you who are into sports will know that unlike the internet related abbreviations I've previously used, this month's abbreviation MVP has been around way before the internet was a thing. MVPs are the most valuable players in a particular team or league, the VIPs of that particular sport community, granting them recognition and a certain special status among their peers. Over the past year, there has been some version of this game playing out in the larger labor market, except it isn't a game. It's sometimes been more of a debate or a lobby or a struggle to figure out some kind of categorization or even a type of hierarchy among different kinds of workers. We first started seeing this kind of conversation intensify around March of last year, when the question arose around what work could be considered essential. There are many answers to this. It is subjective, which is to say it depends on whose perspective you are trying to answer this from. It can depend on what we are actually asking. And it is perhaps more helpful to ask Essential for what? From a sociological perspective, one might consider something like healthcare to be a primary industry during a global health crisis. It was probably never a question that healthcare practitioners would be considered essential during shutdowns or other restrictions on mobility. With a slightly larger scope, the provision of food and household necessities were also quickly identified as primary needs so that grocery stores and importantly, their workers were deemed essential quite universally. Grocery stores may have adapted, but they never closed. And certain fears around the availability of things like toilet paper and other household items were mostly unwarranted. Things got fuzzy around things like providers of alcohol and cannabis. These two were designated as essential. The rationale behind this can be a whole conversation of its own, but the bottom line is that these stores also never closed and their employees showed up. From an economist's point of view, the subjective filter used a slightly different question, something to the effect of, what industries need to continue functioning so that, so that the economy doesn't completely collapse? This included areas such as transportation, specifically regarding the chain of supply, as well as banking, construction, and to varying degrees, education and childcare. I could devote a lot of time and space outlining what the different provincial guidelines officially labeled as essential. A year ago, I noted that Ontario's guiding document listed several dozen industries with several subcategories, as well as exemptions and allowances for adaptations for things that could be done from home or in a way that reduced contact with the public. There were many gray areas. Last year, the Calgary Physician Choir sang the song Fix You by the band Coldplay. If you watch it, you'll see that the last 30 seconds of the video are devoted to crediting over 40 singers, all of whom were doctors and to whom we're giving extra credit these days. The title doctor has always carried with it a certain degree of prestige and there are good reasons for that, from the level of skill and training required to obtain that title, to the hazards involved in that work, and the life-saving potential they have for us as individuals, as well as for health benefits of society as a whole. That hasn't changed. If anything, we have been reminded of why that recognition is there to begin with. 
And the same could be said for other healthcare practitioners who do not carry as prestigious a title as doctor, but who also require similar specialized skills, who face similar hazards, and contribute as team members in the provision of quality healthcare to individuals and society. And we also recognize that many other work positions in several sectors are equally not often recognized for the value that they bring to us as individuals and to the functioning of society, and which themselves can carry their own occupational hazards, especially now. Now that vaccines have become available to varying degrees, a similar set of questions around what is essential has been floating around. Part of this has revolved around which industries and their workers have been prioritized in the immunization order of precedence. Now, it's important to note that many of the decisions made around this kind of conversation are, are not necessarily tied to which jobs are more important and often try to follow a practical set of rationales, including risk factors, such as the possibility for exposure to disease for the employees and their clients. Though it is also important to note that these metrics have at times seemed to have been applied unevenly. Which brings us to a larger question around what kind of work is important. And again, the answers are somewhat subjective, which is to say the answers revolve around the subjects that we focus on. In our economic system, jobs and the work attached to them exist because there is value to our society that our society places on that work, which means that at some level, every job has an element of importance. At an individual level, the stakes become even higher. For most of us, a job is a means to a livelihood, a way to eat, a way to get a place to live, a form of being able to pursue fulfilling activities, a matter of survival. And this means that employment is, or has been, one of the most important parts of one's life for a large segment of the population, which makes for an especially difficult decision when the means to a livelihood can also represent a risk to one's life or the lives of those near us. Over the past year, we have been called to give a closer witness to the hazards of work. To be clear, there have always been hazards and dangers attached to all manners of labor. In the past while, it has been clear that some kinds of work are more hazardous than we realized, and some of them have become even more hazardous still. For too many in our community, that has been a choice they've had to make survive or put one's life at risk. That choice has always been present for too many among us. And now that choice has come up even more often. Leading epidemiologists and labor analysts have made it clear that one of the main mechanisms that we can keep workers, their coworkers, their families and society at large safe especially now, but also at other more typical times, is for paid sick leave to be a standard, normalized part of our culture, a part of our work ethic. This was true before, even when the greatest threat was a regular flu, and it is just as true today as the stakes are higher. My friends, this week, we recognize that people make this kind of difficult choice every day, whether their work is officially categorized as essential or not. On the National Workers' Morning Day on Wednesday, we remember those who gave their all in the service of our community and in the service of their families. And my friends, we recognize that in an economy that relies on the work of all who offer value to society, all employees are the economy's most valuable players. May we recognize that value. So may it be. 
in solidarity and love. Amen.